When I was uh, 13 years old, I started working uh, in a hotel um, uh, where I live. And from there on, I continued uh, growing and growing, uh, going to different uh, hotels and different restaurants, different patisseries, and learning more about the, the, the industry. And, um, and then I moved to Ireland for a while as well. And uh, I've been uh, abroad as well, uh, different locations. I, I worked in France, I worked in England, I worked in Ireland and, and uh, Spain and different uh, Austria. I was in different uh, restaurants and hotels and uh, different concepts as well because I wanted to get inspired by different, obviously, cuisines. And, um, and then this is where I am today. Initially, I started to, to, to be a chef, and then I opened my first restaurant in, in Shemshia when I was very, very young. This is in Malta. When I was in, in, in Ireland, I was involved also in, in, uh, in restaurants that uh, I was part of, but they weren't kind of my own, my own. And in Malta, uh, I was in partnership with, with, uh, with one guy that owned the restaurant, and uh, I was the one that uh, did, did the restaurant and looked after the restaurant front and, and back. So the service and also um, the kitchen, I looked after the whole thing. And uh, four years after I, I opened, uh, five years after I opened Tarragon. I think Tarragon, I was at the early stage, I think I was 23 or 24 years old, something like that, yes. And then after, uh, six years, eight, seven years of, of Tarragon. Then I opened the Caviar and Bull in the, in the Corinthia um, uh, Resort. And uh, a year after I opened Budaman, which now it's replaced uh, with Susurus. Um, uh, the next year we did dinner in the sky, uh, myself and, uh, and uh, uh, a partner of mine, um, uh, and also a very good friend of mine, uh, Mark Weingard. Um, which is uh, uh, an amazing person. I would like to say hi from here. And we were partners in Dinner in the Sky for, for the first year, and then things, uh, things changed, and uh, I took over Dinner in the Sky on my own, and, uh, and uh, we continued on different, uh, different uh, projects. After about a year of, of Dinner in the Sky, I was given the opportunity by the Corinthia Group to be able to open a restaurant in, Cor in Corinthia, Budapest. And uh, it was an amazing experience because uh, I went into a different culture, different, uh, different world of, uh, of, uh, of way of doing business, doing uh, way of communicating with people over here in Malta, like everybody knows me, and if I walk somewhere, I get treated with, uh, you know, like a, a gold platter. You know what I mean? Because obviously, I've been working with them for so, so, such a long time, so I get kind of that kind of privilege. But when you go to a different country, it's a completely different ball game. You don't know anything, you don't know anyone, and you're trying to figuring out everything from scratch. But it was a great experience, and when we opened Caviar and Bull um, in Budapest, um, uh, after three months, it was already talk of, talk of the town. We were doing extremely well. Um, uh, I think within the first year, uh, we were hitting the, the, the business and the sales as Caviar and Bull Malta, which is amazing, you know. And, um, and I think uh, after about two years of, uh, uh, of Caviar and Bull, we opened uh, Uncensored, which is a multi-sensory uh, restaurant whereby we transport you and take you to a different destination, different um, country every 25 minutes with the food, with the drink, with the audio, with the visual, with the culture and the, with the atmosphere. Where uh, my, my executive chef over there is a uh, jury, um, who is uh, a, an amazing talent as well. I also had to collaborate with, um, with university professors of art, with different, uh, for the visuals, 
um, basically uh, to explain it quickly every 25 minutes the walls of the restaurant changes by projection and the audio changes obviously by the by, by the audio effects and 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 the visual effects and it starts by an introduction of the country then we it goes into a, an immersed feeling where the whole restaurant is moving and there's like three minutes of like re-election. Myself and my wife Alison, uh, um, we've been working together, uh, we've been married 21 years and we've been working together since, you know, and she's, uh, she, she designs all my restaurants. Yes, uh, she, 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 she helps me with uh, a lot of things, mainly with design. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, she, she always looks after all the contracts and because I am terrible with these things. I mean, don't n never give me a contract to read. I never read the book in my life, you know? I'm allergic. I have a great team as well because, um, um, as I was explaining earlier to a friend of mine who's just beside the camera right now, I was saying um, uh, that, you know, I don't really do anything, I just uh, delegate most of the things and, I, uh, and uh, delegate them a certain way to ask, uh, like, to, to get things done a certain way. To, with seven restaurants, you need a very good admin, admin team, and, uh, and we have that, you know? Um, when it comes to cuisine and, uh, and, and the side of the kind of that part of, of the business. Um, we have head chefs in every restaurant where I communicate with them on a daily basis, see how we can make it better every day. We get inspired by different chefs. We invite different chefs over to, to show us certain things. And, you know, there's so many techniques that are changing on a, on a daily basis and understanding which ones will, will, will be attracted by people is the key. You know, so this is what I've always done in my life. Uh, I looked for, you know, uh, the best things that are in the industry and you always aim to be the best. Now that, um, that we managed to, to, to get uh, the Michelin Guide um, to Malta, um, local talents have really, really improved. I, I see myself, uh, that uh, there are so many new talented chefs that are aspiring and pushing and trying to be the best in what they do. Um, I think that uh, Malta's culinary uh, journey has drastically shot up and, uh, and people are realizing that the quality has improved a lot. Um, uh, and this is thanks to the passionate chefs, but also thanks to um, uh, Michelin coming over to Malta, accepting our invitation to come over here and, uh, and assess and uh, diagnose our restaurants, because basically um, uh, that's what we were lacking over here. We had local, um, uh, local uh, guides but obviously having a foreign guide and a, and a foreign guide like uh, the Michelin um, uh, brings up a certain standard to, to our culture and uh, to our industry as well. What's trending in Malta is uh, restaurants that are um, creating something different. Um, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of interest in, in vegan as well. Uh, there's a lot of people going uh, towards that direction. Um, and uh, I've realized that m most of, uh, of our clients, when they come to the restaurant, um, uh, they're looking for uh, a tasting menu, a degustation menu, um, and it's something that uh, they, they enjoy more. So, so I think that uh, more and more restaurants now are doing degustation and tasting menu with wine pairing, you know, so it's like something that has evolved a lot in the industry. When it comes to, when it comes to concepts, um, I think we're pretty much covered over here in, in Malta. I think we're 
Um, when summer hits, we have a lot of beach clubs that are open, that they are also improving a lot in the, in the way they, they, they uh, present food and high-level uh, high cuisines. And um, other than that, I mean, uh, during COVID, it was terrible for, for these restaurants, but they were trying to, like, at the moment, what was trending mostly is takeout, you know what I mean? But, but uh, if you put that aside, the rest is, uh, is, is what I just explained, you know? 2020, um, we finished practically two books. The books, one of them is a, a cocktail book and the other one is a cookbook. I think I, there's, a, there's about 100 recipes in one book or 80 recipes in one book. And then um, I'm also working on a, another book, which is a pasta uh, book. It's all about pasta. So we're gonna have that. And uh, the other one, it's, it's more like, a, uh, it's called The Food Journey by Marvin Gauci, which is just, it's a journey and a small biography as well in it. So. Well, it's kind of cool, you know. I've, I've also uh, had the opportunity to, to get involved in some wineries, one in Hungary and one in uh, Umbria, and we have our own production of wine. So I was, uh, apart from trying to, to be a fireman and, and turn off fire everywhere that, that, <laughs> that this COVID brought, I was also getting, um, getting these things done, you know. I believe that this pandemic has also created, apart from a devil, also an angel. Because I believe that people had more time to understand themselves more and to be cre more creative in what they do. Now, I'm not only talking about hospitality it's something in general and you see um, uh, you see you see that uh, there's, there, there has been uh, a lot of, of companies and businesses that have improved their product and their product has improved because they had the time to do it because when things are good and, and it's super busy you're like in a roller coaster and going around and around and around and trying to to keep up with the business that you have, keep up with the the innovative side, but you don't. You're always on a, in a, on a treadmill, you know, running and running, and you're kind of staying in the same place as regards to creativity. But when things had calmed down, I think people has have re, 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 re found themselves, have 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 gotten more inspired by 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 different things. And I think that uh, the quality of life um, uh, after all this will happen, I think it will be better. Uh, we thank God that in Malta uh, we stayed uh, stable, pretty much stable. Um, compared to other countries and uh, from here I would like also to thank uh, uh, our authorities that uh, they understood what they had to do and they did it right and uh, obviously not everything but most of it.